Boston's definitive football franchise is, of course, the New England Patriots, but it hasn't always been that way. Eighty years ago, the Boston Redskins ruled the gridiron, winning the 1936 Eastern Division Championship, but falling to the Green Bay Packers in the NFL Championship. The following year, the team packed up and moved to D.C. The modern-day Washington Redskins suffered a disappointing season last year with a dismal 3-13 and record, and now the franchise has been dealt another blow. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office canceled the Redskins' trademarks, deeming the team name disparaging to Native Americans. The ruling stems from a 2006 petition filed by five Native Americans and comes following a media campaign launched by the Oneida Nation. Will Rogers, Geronimo, unyielding, strong, indomitable. Native Americans call themselves many things. The one thing they don't. So will losing its trademark be enough to change the name of one of the nation's oldest football franchises? Garen Veras hopes it will be enough. He's a former defensive end for the New England Patriots and now works in the UMass Boston Athletic Program. Also joining us is Kerry Byrne. He's founder of the website Cold Hard Football Facts and is a columnist for WEEI and Sports Illustrated. He thinks the Redskins should keep the name. Welcome to Greater Boston. Thank you, Emily. So, Garen, are you personally offended by this, or do you feel it's reached critical mass, enough people are offended, and it should be changed? I, I think there are going to be you know, people on both sides, but I, I think the, the climate of uh, the country right now is, is that uh, the Redskin name is, is an old, uh, it's, it's, it's used up, I think it's time to, to move forward. And, and uh, I think with what the um, U.S. Patent and, and Trademark uh, office did was was the correct thing. It, it's not going to stop the use of the Redskin name, but I I think in for the NFL, I, I think it's it's it should be over. Are you offended by both the name and the logo, or just I, I am full offended. package? Yeah, I, I think the full package. I mean, the history of Native American yeah. uh, and it being involved with the National Football League, and I think the the concept of you know skin color uh, mm. having a color associated with that and and a, an entertainment package of, of competitive sports. I think it's time to change. All right, Carrie, you have written extensively about this, uh, you know, arguing for the Redskins to keep the name. What, what's your central argument? Well, uh, my personal take on it is that my grandmother was a Mi'kmaq Indian, and I rooted for the Redskins, even as a Boston kid, because they were the Redskins. It was kind of a way for me and some superficial way to connect to to a part of my family I never knew. Uh, and I think a lot, of, you know, a lot of Native Americans do root for the Redskins. And the Richmond Times dispatched a survey of a number of different Indian tribes in Virginia. They were all <laughs> Redskins fans. One, of, one, one chief in, in Virginia said, 98% of my tribe are Redskins fans. So I think it's not an issue. For, I think it's an issue not driven by Native Americans as it is by you know, white guilt and issues like that. And one reason I think I agree with Garen that the climate of the nation has changed, and I do think that's unfortunate because because if you look at the history, uh, there was an actual individual Lenny Lenape Indian who inspired yeah. the Redskins logo and name. Uh, his name was Tammany, the same Tammany who led to Tammany Hall that you, you might have known from civics class. Uh, and the owner, the, 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 man, the man named James Gaffney who bought the, the Boston baseball team uh, in 1912 and changed the name to the Braves, was a member of Tammany Hall and his, him, him introducing that logo uh, and changing the name to the Braves uh, was a way for him to pay tribute to this this Indian. Not only was he uh, uh, an important figure in American history, he was worshipped by the founding fathers as a patron saint of the Americanists, this okay. Tammany. And I think it's a, a story that hasn't been told. It, it speaks to the multiculturalism yeah, of, of the point, U.S. Because some of these names are very specific. Yeah. You know, the Atlanta Braves, Kansas City Chiefs, Chicago yeah. Blackhawks. So there are names of specific tribes. Is that problematic? Or as long as they're the Seminoles, as long as they're referencing a certain tribe, it's okay? It's, it's the reverence to the color of the skin? You think the, uh, the other's okay? I, th I think so. I, it, when he brings up 1912, I mean, we're talking, you know, a, a long time ago. I mean, it was a, a different climate. Uh, back then, and it may have been acceptable at that time, but I, I think with, uh, you know, from 1960s on with the Civil Rights Act and, and uh, you know, trying to not have separation, I, I think it's time to, to realize that it is a disparaging uh, term. 
I agree the name's anachronistic. I do agree with that. But does that make it offensive? Most Natives say no. And I do think it'd be unfortunate to wipe from, um, you know, from American culture the, the contributions mm -hmm. that, that that natives have made to this country, and that's what the name was originally a tribute to. You know, one of the things is, you wonder where this is going to stop. I mean, the Cleveland Indians changed their logo a few years ago, rightfully so, because the first one was cartoonish, and you could right. really say that yeah. that was a pejorative. But there's a couple of other logos we found, like uh, Eskimo Pie, um, then there's a ben Frito Bandito. I think they have since dropped that one. But when you think about it, those are anachronistic too, in a way. And it's the it, Fighting Irish logo. The Fighting it's Irish. A pugilistic you know, Irish guy. So it, it, it's 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 almost like critical mass. And and I'm and I'm going to ask Kerry to comment on something you said. Do you really want the government? getting involved in this? Well, that, that's the thing. I, I don't necessarily agree with the government. I think it should be, to me personally, as a former National Football League player, that uh, I, I'm offended that, you know, are the players have to step up and say, are, are they against this? And I, I think that uh, the players in the league, they need to, to voice their opinion mm -hmm. uh, and, and be heard. And I think if, if they are heard and if they bond, uh, bond together, I think they're going to see some, some uh, action to, by the NFL to say, hey, if our players do not feel that this is uh, the, right, the right name for it, then I think you'll see some change. Yeah, I mean, you know, markets drive everything, and markets should, should drive things. In this case, to me, this is largely a manufactured controversy. Most people don't care. It's only in the last couple of years that people started making a lot of noise, a couple of notable sports writers. Uh, Who are refusing gonna, to even use the name at all. Refusing to even right. use the name. And, you know, that's, I guess that's their prerogative to, to do that. Uh, but, you know, the, the name in and of itself was meant to be a tribute. You don't, you just, the, you know... That it's meant to be offensive is, is just doesn't pass the logic. But there's some, a lot of words we've you know thrown out over the years. Negro was a a real yeah. term, still is, but we don't use it because people find it offensive. Yeah, yeah. and I I also see you know a lot of uh, uh, people in in Congress are are going against you know, saying that they should should uh, get rid of redskins. And I I think if they're going out on a limb and they know of mm. the constituency. Uh, Th those are the people who were voting for fish to fry. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just my my when I started researching this to find that the there is actually this this yeah. uh, Indian this native I mentioned this Delaware uh, Indian Tammany there are paintings of him and he looks just like the Redskins logo. I think it'd be a shame to whitewash his his uh, impact on U.S. history, uh, you know, from my history books. And I'd, I'd love to find some way to keep that keep that story alive and, and tell that story because it's an important. Too bad Dan Snyder story. doesn't tell the story. I mean, he's, he, 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 should. he hasn't he should. handled this with great no. plum. Let's just put it that but way. But it's a great story about American multiculturalism. How, in fact, in uh, in fact, there's a great book I read uh, called The Chimney Legend by a guy named Joseph White Norwood, and he said. The U.S., the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution, our whole way of life would not have existed without the blending of, of European and Native cultures. And, and this, this Indian right. chimney represented that. So it's decided before the, end, the beginning of football season in August, which doesn't seem that far away. <laughs> right. yep. Garen yeah. Ver Veris and um, Kerry Byrne, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.